ranking every Call of Duty from worst to best. The community is always very vocal when content creators rank COD games, so I thought to myself, why not have the community do the rankings instead? With that in mind, I made a Call of Duty tournament where I made 32 polls where each one had two COD games face off to have a winner, and these polls ended up having over half a million votes. This means the sample size is large enough to make this video accurate to the entire community's feelings about Call of Duty. And with all the results compiled together, this is every Call of Duty ranked worst to best. Vanguard. I can't say I'm shocked to see this game here. Everyone seems to be very vocal about disliking this game. The campaign is trash for being inaccurate to history and being a giant backstory with the exception of the first and final mission. The zombies was very rough at launch, but it did improve later in the game's life cycle. And for multiplayer, I actually enjoyed it a lot in the first month of the game's life cycle, and then they added the incendiary grenade, which was super annoying. I personally don't think Vanguard has the worst multiplayer, but as a game overall, I think it's a fair ranking to have it as the worst Call of Duty. Advanced Warfare, a game that always has people loudly defending it in the comments, but clearly is disliked by the community at large. I thought the campaign was fun, but not elite. The zombies had some charm to it at first, but quickly became evident that it just couldn't hold a light to Treyarch zombies. And it was even locked behind DLC to play, which was a terrible decision. And for the multiplayer, it definitely had a fun element to it, and the map design was pretty good paired with the advanced movement, but it did have some catastrophic issues. First is an obvious one, with pay to win microtransactions. The drops held weapon variants that changed the stats of the base weapons, and all the good variants were far and away better than every single base weapon in the game with no way to earn them outright. This made it the more you pay, the better you'll do. This made it the worst supply drop system in history because it was the only game to lock all the best weapons behind supply drops. And the second issue was heavy skill based matchmaking that the community at large hates. That's because it only helps the bottom 10% of the player base and it's created for the non Call of Duty players who don't really care about the games. The reason it is ranked down here based off the comments and poll results is because they introduced two plagues into Call of Duty that still affect it to this day. World War II. I thought this one would be ranked slightly higher, but you guys spoke and ranked it as the third worst Call of Duty. The campaign was great and Turner's death is still very sad to this day. The zombies was the scariest in COD history with maybe an exception for World at War zombies, but the issue was that each map they released for zombies got worse, which made it one of the lower tier zombies experiences. The multiplayer at launch was rough because the original heads of Sledgehammer wanted you to feel like an ordinary soldier while playing an arcade shooter. This was probably in response to the advanced movement fatigue the community was feeling. That's why eventually Activision got rid of the two leads and promoted different people who then listened to the community and revamped the entire multiplayer and made it actually incredibly fun. But it was six months after the release and most of the community had already given up on the game and it was too little too late. Make sure to vote on my new poll to determine the next Call of Duty multiplayer video I make. Modern Warfare 2019. This one actually shocked me. I personally hate the multiplayer outside of search and destroy and gunfight, but judging by all the comments I get when I say this, the community loved the game, but the polls showed that those were the vocal minority. But the real reason I'm shocked is because I thought Warzone was a beloved mode of Modern Warfare 2019 that would raise it in the rankings. I know I personally loved Warzone and is what I was originally growing my channel with. I still upload Warzone 2 content, but it certainly isn't as fun as Warzone 1 to me. And I thought the campaign was in the top half of Call of Duty stories, but the multiplayer that only supported one playstyle with terribly designed maps with safe spaces, an incredibly fast time to kill, and heavy skill based matchmaking that only promotes tactical gameplay, tanked its ranking to the bottom. Call of Duty is an arcade shooter, maybe Infinity Ward should learn that. If you would like me to make another video on every Call of Duty, please leave a like and comment to let me know. And make sure to subscribe for more Call of Duty polls and rankings, as well as helpful and entertaining Warzone content. Infinite Warfare, a game that wasn't given a fair shot that was released with advanced movement fatigue and COD 4 remaster, it never stood a chance to be beloved by the community. But with time, the community has softened its stance on Infinite Warfare. Now they only think it's a below average Call of Duty instead of trash. The campaign was great and told an incredible story that could have fun with settings for campaign mission locations because of space travel. Then the zombies provided us with the best non-Treyarch experience ever with incredible maps like Zombies in Spaceland and Rave in the Redwoods. The zombies had a lighter tone and was more of a fun atmosphere and it worked perfectly. I wish that Infinity Ward would continue the Zombies universe in the future, and the multiplayer wasn't great but it certainly wasn't garbage. It just felt like Black Ops 3 Lite. Not quite as fun because the killstreaks maps and specials were all inferior, but it wasn't as bad as people made it out to be. Ghosts. Where do I start with this game? 
I guess I'll go with the campaign. It was enjoyable, but ended with a cliffhanger that was never resolved because of the negative reaction the community had to the game. Which makes sense in context, because it was released directly after Black Ops 2, and they released the slowest multiplayer gameplay to date in the COD franchise. Which was a shame, because their perk system was incredibly cool, with their newly designed point system with some perks costing more than others depending on how much they did. The hit detection was the smoothest in Call of Duty history, but the maps and time to kill combined promoted the most awful camping ever. On release, the multiplayer had about three good maps with Warhawk, Strike Zone, and Freight, and the rest were mediocre to bad. However, the DLC were actually great with cool cameos from movies like Michael Myers. The Extinction Mode was a cool take on zombies with aliens, but it wasn't quite to the quality we expected from a zombies mode at that time, but there was definitely something there. Another third mode from Infinity Ward that I would be interested to see come back. Modern Warfare 2022. This is another result that I was not expecting. The main reactions I've been seeing are that this game is awful, but the votes say that it's actually an average Call of Duty. This game feels like MW 2019, but with slightly better maps and cooler side modes in Warzone. The multiplayer is still pretty campy and slow because it is an Infinity Ward game with very fast time to kill and slightly bigger maps with power positions. However, Gunfight and Search are still very fun in this game with regular modes like Kill Confirmed and Domination playing a bit better than they did in Modern Warfare 2019. The campaign in Warzone is where I think it loses to MW 2019, but the side modes like DMZ must be more appreciated than I realized, but good on Modern Warfare 2022 for being better received than I thought. Cold War. Now we are starting to get into the Call of Duties that have an above average perception in the community. This game had an incredible campaign that major decisions matter by having multiple endings. I always find that to make the stakes higher in story driven modes and just something that I personally really enjoy. While the Zombies isn't my favorite in the franchise because the maps are a bit lacking, it does have by far the best mechanics in Call of Duty Zombies history. So for that you gotta give Cold War some extra points. Finally we're gonna move over to the multiplayer and I think this is without a doubt the best multiplayer experience in the last four years of Call of Duty. The maps are pretty good and it wasn't slow paced like two of the past four games, but it still has the dreaded skill based matchmaking that makes it feel like you're playing in MLG games for free. Something I noticed with the end results of the tournament is that no Call of Duty game ranked in the top half of the final rankings had heavy skill based matchmaking. Maybe that's something Activision should take into account. The fan favorite games do not have this BS feature created for the casual players who barely Rarely play their game. Make Call of Duty for your fans, not the people who don't care about it. Black Ops 4. I was pleasantly surprised when this game finished so highly because I always see people commenting that this game sucks or is the worst COD ever because it didn't have a campaign, which wasn't the best but not unforgivable when Activision forced them to make their first Call of Duty Battle Royale last minute to try and compete with Fortnite, which took away their time to make a true campaign. And I believe Blackout would have been an insanely popular Battle Royale if they had just made it free to play like Warzone 1. I know I had a lot of fun playing it, and Black Ops 4 just gets overly hated all around in the comment sections of videos. The zombies had issues for sure, but it wasn't bad. Not all the maps were great, but it had a few great ones that made Black Ops 4 zombies still worth playing. And the multiplayer was the last true Call of Duty with the normal prestige system and create a class system. It tried out some new things in multiplayer with needing to use stim shots to regain your health, which was also higher than usual at 150, and then they also made the game 5v5 instead of 6v6 in normal modes because of that extra health. This made Black Ops 4 very unique to other CODs, while still feeling like Call of Duty. Overall, I thought it was an above average game, it just wasn't elite. World at War. The game that scared kids all around the world with its gory and gritty campaign that told an incredible World War II story and introduced us to the legend of Reznov. And it wasn't just the campaign that scared people, it was also them starting zombies in the Call of Duty franchise and it had a much scarier aura about it than the later Treyarch Zombies games. It was a bit bare bones like the multiplayer, but with each map they added features that became the stepping stones to the future of Call of Duty Zombies. And its multiplayer was very fun with great maps while still being very bare bones because it didn't add features to the mode from the previous installment. They did add a great mode in War that played amazingly in this game, and of course we did get the dogs for the first time, which if you didn't know is my favorite kill streak of all time and has luckily been featured in multiple Treyarch games. COD 4. This is a game that exploded Call of Duty into the biggest first person shooter game franchise that would become a household name that even your mom knows. This started an amazing trilogy of campaigns that introduced us to the main characters of Captain Price and Soap. But what everyone wants to hear about is all the features they added to multiplayer that have become the norm and expected that make COD unique to all other first person shooters. They added create a class, perks, and killstreaks, the ability to customize your endgame experience with what guns and perks 
perks you wanted to use to complement your playstyle was absolutely huge and made this game a giant innovation at its time. The community will always appreciate everything this game did to advance our fun in Call of Duty. Modern Warfare 3. We have made it to the top 5 and I wasn't exactly sure where this game would finish, but I knew it would be top 5 because it was an incredible experience. I think this was actually the worst campaign in the original Modern Warfare trilogy, but I do think it had the best final mission in Call of Duty history because it is a perfect culmination of the three campaigns that gives you such a satisfactory feeling of accomplishment at the end. This game had spec ops which is always fun in co-op, but it also added survival mode to be a different round based co-op mode to compete with Treyarch Zombies. And MW3 was my favorite Modern Warfare multiplayer mode because it was like MW2 but just a little bit more balanced. The death streak still sucked majorly with Dead Man's hand that was a pocket nuke. But, Modern Warfare 3 also created one of the best things to ever be added to Call of Duty in Specialist Streaks, where you would gain perks until you had them all with an 8 kill streak that was perfect for going for MOABs. You felt unstoppable once you had every perk in the game, moving at lightning speed and having protection from UAVs and kill streaks. And they added the face off modes with 2v2 and 3v3 that were a blast to play with friends. I loved Modern Warfare 3. Black Ops 3. Let's get this out of the way. The campaign sucked. I know some people love it, but I think the campaign required outside research to become more enjoyable, and I think a COD campaign should have a great story that you want to know more about and find fun facts researching after, not have to research while playing because it makes little sense. I will say this though, the first mission was incredible, and then the zombies was a masterpiece. I think Shadows of Evil was an amazing first map to get, and it was immediately followed up by another all-time great map in Drys and Drog. And Garod Krovi was incredible. Not a single one of the original maps was bad and we got the zombie chronicles giving us all of our fan favorite maps from the previous Treyarch games and then the mod support on PC for zombies allowing for infinite original maps to be created was the greatest feature ever added to a Call of Duty. This makes Black Ops 3 Zombies a game that will never die unless Activision axes the servers and allows hackers to be rampant. Oh wait, they kind of seem to want to do that. And the multiplayer was by far my favorite advanced movement game because it still kept most of the fights boots on the ground but used the advanced movement to help prevent camping with flank routes and abilities to enter buildings in multiple ways, making camping effectively much more difficult and making the pace of play very fast. And Black Ops 3 had arguably the best set of score streaks ever with the raps being the most epic. Modern Warfare 2. It had one of the best campaigns ever with some of the most memorable missions with some creating huge controversies. Shepard betraying Ghost and Roach still gets me to this day, but the final mission lets us get our sweet revenge. Spec Ops was fun and my favorite mission was the snowmobile race. But the real bread and butter of this game is its multiplayer that is known for its unique balancing style of making everything overpowered so nothing is overpowered powered. The killstreak innovation was incredible in this game and there was no feeling as good as getting your first nuke and I got mine on quarry. I still remember it to this day as I'm sure you guys do with yours. Please tell me in the comments where you got your first nuke and I'm still sad that we never got the grenade launcher update because Activision got rid of the best developers Infinity Ward ever had. After Modern Warfare 2, how many Infinity Ward multiplayers did we get that were loved by the community? Think about it. It's really only Modern Warfare 3 that was basically just a copy of Modern Warfare 2, but with grenade launchers balanced and no more Commando Pro. Activision really messed that one up, but can we be surprised? My beloved Black Ops 1. I was rooting for this game to win the tournament, but I'm happy with it getting second. This is my favorite Call of Duty ever because it has my favorite campaign where we get to see Reznov again and get introduced to incredible characters like Mason, Woods, and Adler. I love the time setting of this game with the Vietnam War and Cold War happening. Then we get to have fun in zombies with classic maps like Kino de Toten, 5, Call of the Dead, and Moon, which had the best easter egg of all time. Even though that map had a bunch of problems, it still had some bright spots. And the multiplayer is super fun. It added a new system to unlock weapons weapons, attachments, and camos with COD points, and no, I don't mean the ones you buy with real money today. They were earned with playtime and score, and they added brand new modes called party games which included fan favorites with sticks and stones, gun game, and one in the chamber, where you could actually bet your COD points to earn them more quickly, and if you were good at the game this was super effective. I wish they would bring back this system again because it was so much fun. Then we had the best selection of launch maps in all of Call of Duty history with Nuketown, Firing Range, Summit, Jungle, WMD, Grid, Havana, Hanoi, Launch, Radiation, and Villa. I could go on. That was a rapid fire of maps right there. And then they also introduced 
one of the best killstreaks of all time with the Blackbird that is still used in every Treyarch game today and used less effectively in Infinity Ward games with the advanced UAV. The gameplay you're seeing in the background is also me using only ballistic knives and tomahawks for my theater mode because you could have fun in old Call of Duties with no heavy skill based matchmaking. It was so satisfying going on streaks while throwing tomahawks to people's domes. My heart is happy when I think about Black Ops 1. Black Ops 2. This is the game we were all expecting and the vocal minority who say Black Ops 2 is overrated was dreading. This is objectively the best Call of Duty because just like Black Ops 1, it hits the trifecta of having all three modes be incredible, but the zombies and multiplayer are just a little bit better, which is probably why it won the tournament. The campaign had multiple endings and had arguably the best villain in the entire franchise, but my question is, did you kill Briggs or shoot him in the leg? Let me know in the comments. The zombies had some great maps and some not so good ones, but I still say to this day, Transit was super fun when you played with your friends, even though it had issues because it was too ambitious with the console technology at the time. But Mob of the Dead, my favorite zombies map, Buried and Origins were incredible. The story was amazing, the easter eggs were super fun, and the gameplay was smooth. Just a great zombies experience. And then the multiplayer created score streaks for the first time that rewarded objective gameplay that made matches more fun and earning kill streaks easier. We had an amazing selection of weapons where every category had multiple weapons that could be used effectively. We had Team DSR and Team Ballista for snipers as an example. And Team DSR all the way. Black Ops 2 also created the best competitive scene for Call of Duty with Arenas mode that was an absolute blast to play when you wanted to play tough and competitive matches instead of playing like that every game with heavy skill based matchmaking. Black Ops 2 just did everything right and that's why the community picked it as the best Call of Duty. If you could make one change to the community rankings, what would it be? Thank you for voting on the polls, liking the video, and subscribing. You guys are all legends and make sure to check out the Every Call of Duty series on screen here. I know you're going to enjoy it. Peace.